All right, folks, why they came from Merlwani, and with us today, we have German death metal band Deserted Fear drummer Simon Menx. How are you doing today? Oh, it's very good. I come just from practicing some drums. Dead Shows Rising, you know, a great title uh, for for mm -hmm. the album. You know, eventually I was not able to understand the lyrical side, which obviously we will talk about. But regarding the sound of it, I mean, it kind of made me think of uh, like old school death metal, the one which was kind of uh, formulated in States and Swedish mm -hmm. death metal, you know, kind of kind of having sex. And having the byproduct <laughs> that is the sound you guys have, you know, on your record, you know, a lot of groove, a lot of brutality on the record. But what I want to know here is what made you guys in this record push yourselves a lot as compared to the previous one? Yeah, it was a it, it was a development. So we um, now we are able to uh, play stuff technically uh, technically that we weren't able to play uh, in 2014 or 2012. Mm -hmm. So um, we developed in our um, uh, yeah, our way to create uh, songs, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, creating harmonies and uh, but also fat riffs and um, heavy drums. So um, I think we um, also. Uh, spended a lot of m more uh, time mm -hmm. to write these songs, so um, I think not only the sound developed, but also our way to yeah, our way to create create these songs. Good. So you know, talking about your drumming in general on this record, you know, about your influences as a drummer for you, how important is it to kind of innovate yourself when you're writing and when you're recording these drum lines because when I listen to this album I hear a lot of grooves a lot of rolls that that smooth transitions from the double bass to toms and how you use the cymbal work so throughout your recording this album uh, you know the drums how was your experience and what influences would you say kind of reflect you as a drummer um. In the time we um, wrote the songs, we heard a lot of Gojira, mm -hmm. and I think uh, this guy uh, Mario Deplanter also. I think he uh, influenced me a bit. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we have another um, style of, or I have another style of playing drums, and we need another kind of uh, drum playing in this uh, for our songs. Mm -hmm. So. I think it's uh, not not so important for me to develop a lot. It's more important for me to it's more important to uh, that the drums fit into the songs and into the guitar lines and so right. on and to uh, yeah to have um, an interesting interesting uh, wall of sound, sound. <laughs> mm -hmm. right right that's that's really good because you've you, you've not only kept it uh, you know, a simple at certain sections which goes well with the rhythm but at the same time there are so those moments where you've kind of you know put in your touch so that's where the difference lies because when we talk about a death metal album a drummer does a lot i mean i've heard many death, it, let's take an example of asphyx they they did the mm. recent album and even though they have these doom elements and then you see the way the drummer shapes these doom uh, section with a lot of double bass and how he kind of manipulates that that's innovation to me as a drummer and to you when I listen to this record I feel you've you've used those minute gaps to kind of fill in your drum lines in such a way that it doesn't feel like a filler to be honest mm -hmm. so that was mm -hmm. really good and what does even better uh, are the raw vocals on this record felt like you guys didn't want to polish it you just wanted it raw in your face as it is was that a conscious decision? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, very conscious because uh, um, on the last on the last album we had um, a little, <clears throat> yeah, a little uh, technical things. Uh, we tried it out, but yeah, it, uh, we weren't uh, in the in the um, yeah after 
the album was ready, we weren't uh, 100% um, happy with it. Cool. That's really good. And and you guys really face your destiny. What a wonderful video it is. And and I was reading the comments where people said that I've seen that wolf all the time in Sonata Artica videos. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so it kind of carries the, 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 the story forward. So what I found was a bass player in the video and, and then your press release says no, there's no mention of the bassist. Um, no, the thing with the bassist, uh, that's uh, um, um, an often, yeah, it's a question that we get uh, often. So, uh, we were three persons, so Fabian, uh, guitarist, uh, Mane, singer and guitarist and me, and um, from the beginning on, mm -hmm. since 2007, I think, okay. yeah, and so our bassist was... Uh, it was a position that always changed. Okay. And so uh, now we have two bassists actually. Wow. <laughs> that are uh, that are um, all right with this uh, with the situation that mm -hmm. um, they are not um, involved in the songwriting and so on and all, all the all the um, yeah all the business stuff and so on and. But they are coming with us to the concerts, or uh, okay. we have them for the videos. Cool. So it's it's not a very um, a very how do you say it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's not a um, a position that is fixed. Fixed. Okay. So it keeps <laughs> changing from one guy to other guy, and then the other guy comes back on stage and plays shows, right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, just um, how they have time. So if the one has uh, the one bassist has the, has the time to play, so we take him and or or the other way around. Awesome, that's good to hear. And the riffs on this album are what I call as infectious. But I mean, there's a lot of groove <laughs> in it. You guys not only you know. Uh, have this good skill of uh, structuring the songs, but the the way the, the way the riffs are written and and kind of fused together throws a, a you know a good homage to to bands like you know Obituary the kind of grooves they have everybody loves them and then like I said Asphyx and you know there's a lot of Swedish tinges where I kind of see Unleashed also here and there in your sound yes. so for you guys to maintain that vision of writing songs as a band. Uh, you know, writing death metal songs is very important. How on this record you felt with the riffs as compared to the previous albums? Um, yeah, the riffs are uh, definitely a little bit more groovier than before. Mm -hmm. And I also tried to uh, get uh, the drums, the drums on the guitars. So, um, like you said, we have a um, we have a few more songs that are very groovy this time, right? And um, yeah, because uh, we also made the uh, the um, so we found that it's much more fun to play and also for the audience to hear uh, a more groovier song than nice. always so brutal. Uh, you know this, this thrashy. Right. right, and it reminds me of the song "Towards Humanity," which kind of fell straight out of the Teutonic thrash metal giants. Like it reminded me of Creator, if if if, if I have to say, because I was listening to, <laughs> to Gods of Violence, which is coming out in January, and I was also yeah. listening to your record parallelly, and I clearly felt like this song "Towards Humanity" should be. On the creator album, it has such a great uh, the the tempo wise and the way the creator writes song with a lot of melody in it. That's that's another aspect of, of you guys, which I really love, is how you uh, inject a lot of melody into your uh, you know the, the, the death metal sound. That's very important, and I'm mm -hmm. sure Fabian would spend a lot of time, even even with your uh, singer, to kind of infuse these uh, ideas together. Because not every time a band gets the the combination of melody and the death metal right yeah 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 the, uh, like i said so uh, they spend it, um, a lot of time uh, writing this this um, riffs and so on and putting them together 
because uh, we had a little bit, we were a little bit stressed mm -hmm. on uh, Kingdom of Worms the last time, getting all the stuff uh, together. And so we just started uh, writing songs when Kingdom of Worms was out. We just started uh, uh, to write new material. Mm -hmm. And that was a good decision. So we had a lot of time to to write this shit together and get a good product. Indeed, man. And and the mastermind Don Swano. I mean, I have I don't have to say anything about him. I love the guy, <laughs> and you know he's he's like one of the the the, the biggest out, especially in the death metal genre. I don't think any other band would want to give your mix and master to any other person other than Don Swano. So when he got the album, what was the first response you heard from him when he heard the album? He was very uh, impressed and happy because uh, from the first hour on, so uh, with My Empire, with our debut album, uh, we went to him to uh, yeah to give it in his hands, mm -hmm. and he was very happy to uh, get this kind of music. Right. He said it's just uh, the music he wants to do. <laughs> right. He wants to work. And that was a great honor for us, and we were very happy. And he, yeah, he made a good, good, uh, it was a good record, very nice record. You guys got yeah? signed to uh, Century Media. That must be a very, you know, great feeling to be part of a label as big as Century, which is like one of the leading uh, metal, uh, you know, independent sources in the world. Yeah, for sure. So, it's, uh, uh, yeah, don't have really, I really don't have words for it because it's such a unrealistic thing. And the first moment was, was Century Media. That's more contacts and so on to let's get us forward. And yeah, because it's our dream to to play for the people and play good concerts and make nice music. True, man. I, I, I like that. And now, you, you know, you guys have played so many festivals in Germany. What are the plans of taking this album live? Has there anything been kind of uh, dis discussed so far with respect to touring? For this album, uh, we don't have a big tour yet, but we have uh, a few um, release show gigs, mm -hmm. uh, release show concerts with Disaster, yeah. with the German Black and Thrash Disaster. And Rogash, that's a band from Jena. It's more brutal death metal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, besides that, there are um, a few things planned, but uh, it's it's not fixed, so I can't uh, talk about. <laughs> Good man, I, I hope you get you guys get to play some festivals also because you know obviously next year would be pretty much packed. So before we yeah. end, I want to know how is having Thomas Lindbergh on the record and why that song is a bonus track when you have a guy like At The Gay's Frontman? <laughs> why is it not part of the album? Yeah, you have to uh, take this stuff mysteriously. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, it's a bonus track because uh, we had two songs that we um, had on the yeah there are some kinds like uh, b-side tracks you know what i mean yeah yeah, B -side, I get it. Uh, yeah. and uh, one of the songs is actually a very old song that we never put it on the record mm -hmm. um, ne uh, not put it on um, my empire or kingdom of worms mm -hmm. so it's i think it must be six years old or so, five or six years. Wow. No, and we, um, yeah, we worked on it a little bit, but only a little bit, and uh, decided to record it and put it on the album. I think it's the, yeah, it's the very last. It's the 12, the number 12 on the album. You know, I, I wish you good luck with the release. I. You know the way I love it. I you know wish the fans love the same by the record and 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 see you guys live at the release shows and the upcoming tour. So if you had to kind of sum up the the sound of the album in a sentence, what would you say? 
Yeah, it's a, it's a fucking big truck rolling over your feet. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. I agree and with that. Crazy, crazy thing is you will enjoy it, I think. Good, man. Good. Uh, have a great time ahead and good luck with the release, brother. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, take care and uh, visit us. We drink a beer together.